In this new era of NASCAR playoffs, there are plenty of seasons that see multiple examples of missing rings. Gone are the days where drivers like Mark Martin would be the lone driver to miss out on a title. And unfortunately for Denny Hamlin, he has been the subject to this many times. 2019 was much like this. So 2020 was a year that the 11 team looked to finally break through. And this would once again start with the Daytona 500. Still green, and here they come. And here comes Blaney. Ryan Blaney up behind Ryan Newman, trying to get him to Hamlin. Newman backed up to Blaney. Big run coming here. To no. the inside, Newman to the front. Nothing Denny Hamlin could do. What can Ryan Blaney now do? Here comes a push from Denny Hamlin. Oh, this thing's not over yet. Not at all. Ryan Newman off turn four for the final time. Blaney to the outside, oh. to the inside. Here comes Hamlin up the outside. Wow. Crash into the wall, into the air, oh. goes Newman. Oops. Just like the 2019 Great American Race, it belonged to Hamlin. This was overshadowed though by the terrifying crash that Ryan Newman suffered at the finish. But even so, Hamlin was a lock into the 2020 playoffs from the get-go. And that was as good for him as the first four races before the 2020 COVID pandemic shutdowns would be. They were mediocre at best afterwards. But at the resumption of the season, the 11 team began to show their championship form. Denny Hamlin will go to victory lane. NASCAR has called the race for rain. And Hamlin will pick up his 39th career win tonight second of the season after winning the Daytona 500 and his third Darlington win in 16 attempts. He now becomes the 14th driver in history to win three races at the track too tough to tame. And he's won the first NASCAR Wednesday race since July 4th 1984 when Richard Petty Got his 200th victory. How about that mask? Ah, oh, Denny. He's got a smile on his face, Mike. More aggressive can do when there's this little grip left in the racetrack and you're running that close to the wall, can just pull you right into it. White flag waves, one lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Blaney coming for second to the inside of Chase Elliott. And back up in line. Tyler Reddick has fallen two and a half behind them. And here comes Hamlin. Denny Hamlin, 40th career win at Homestead Miami Speedway. Pretty amazing. Not counting the road courses, it's the longest last lap in NASCAR. Two and a half miles around the tri-cornered Pocono Raceway. Boy, Denny Hamlin, what a season he is having. Coming off a strong season, just came up short for that championship last year. Is this the year that maybe he can get that done for the first time? But he's going to, he loves this racetrack here at Pocono, Mike. And Denny Hamlin. It's going to tie Jeff Gordon as the all-time Pocono winner with six checkered flags at the Tricky Triangle. With one lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank, Denny Hamlin in position to win his fifth race of 2020. The gap still a half a second between first and second. Denny Hamlin's successes this year started off with another Daytona 500 win. He says one of the biggest things he wants to do this year is be able to celebrate with his crew because he knows that's who's getting him up front, giving him fast cars. They've done it again. He's done it again. Kansas winner, Denny Hamlin. Oh, what a dream, man. This race team is such a dream. Congrats, Denny Hamlin. Congrats, everybody. Thank you. After all of these wins, Hamlin was heavily considered a championship favorite alongside Kevin Harvick. Both really had been dominant with the 550 horsepower high downforce package. This was good for a majority of the season, but not for the smaller tracks that use the 750 horsepower low downforce racing package. 
this would need to be addressed before the playoffs. Ironically, Hamlin would do this at one of his worst tricks, Dover. One lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. He's seen the white flag again, five wins already in 2020. Looks as though he's going to tie Kevin Harvick for the most wins in 2020. Harvick has six. Denny Hamlin looking for his six. As you mentioned, he had never won at the Monster Mile before. Momentum definitely on his side as Denny Hamlin comes out of four. And Denny Hamlin will once again see the checkered flag. He wins at the Monster Mile. Heading into the playoffs with 47 playoff points and a second place seating behind only Kevin Harvick, Hamlin was looking to be a championship favorite once again. So, in the first round, Hamlin skated by, doing the bare minimum. A three-race span of a 13th at Darlington, a 12th at Richmond, and a 21st at the Bristol Night Race was more than enough to get the job done. Hamlin had gained a playoff point two in this round, which would prove to be more important and crucial in later races. At Las Vegas, the first 550 horsepower package race of the playoffs, Hamlin dominated the night, only to come up just short due to a strategy call late at the end. This all led to one of Hamlin's best tracks, the treacherous Talladega Super Speedway. Wynn locked Hamlin into the round of eight, a round that would be tough. Hamlin was 32 up on fifth, heading into the round. But with the contact and a 15th place finish, he fell only to being 20 points above the cutoff. At Texas, his speed late in the race got him a ninth place finish, putting him 27 over cutoff drivers Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman. This led to Martinsville, which usually was one of Hamlin's best tracks. But with it being with the 750 package, it was something that wasn't a shoe in Hamlin started out though strong, winning stage one and finishing third in stage two. This gave him much needed points, boosting him 18 more than he would have had before. He would need every one of those points late as his car began to fail and Chase Elliott was on his way to victory. In the closing laps, he was locked in a tight points battle with Brad Keselowski and Kevin Harvick. Both owned points tiebreakers over him as well. As the race drew to a close, the fate of his season was in Kevin Harvick's hands. The final turn. Go get it. He needs the position. Oh, Harvick spins the 18. Turns into the 18. He turns as well. The 18 crosses the start finish line, and Harvick is going to be out of the playoffs. Harvick's shortcomings led to Hamlin being into the final race alongside Joey Logano, Chase Elliott, and Brad Keselowski. And he also had a little help from his teammate who was instructed not to pass him from what it seemed like, but NASCAR didn't see any reason to penalize. While Hamlin had the best overall season of the championship four, he was an underdog due to his underperformance all season at the high horsepower tracks. And those underdog worries were not unfounded, as the 11 was far and away the slowest of the championship four. Even with differing pitch strategies, Hamlin came in last of the four, and would be the only one not to lead a lap. I'd show some clips of the race, but really, Hamlin was always behind them. He was truly the only also-ran of the final four who had no points of contention during the race. After the seven-win season, it all went down the drain due to JGR not keeping up with the high horsepower package. And it makes many wonder, what if the finale hadn't been moved to Phoenix in 2020? What if JGR, and especially the 11 team, had pinned down speed with the 750 horsepower package? What if, in 2020, Denny Hamlin captured his missing ring?